This specimen shows the kidney along with the renal vessels, the ureter, the bladder, and the prostate. These, by the way, are the inferior vena cava and the abdominal aorta. The structures entering the hilum of the kidney are the renal vein, which lies anteriorly, the renal artery, which is in the middle, and the pelvis of the ureter, which lies posteriorly. The renal vein has been removed on this side. You can just see a little bit of the cut edge. Note that the renal vein on the left side is much longer as compared to the right, and it crosses anterior to the aorta. Also note its relationship to this artery, which is the superior mesenteric artery. This, by the way, is the celiac trunk. I am now tracing the ureter from the kidney to the bladder. The ureter receives its blood supply from the neighboring vessels. The lumen of the ureter is narrower in three places. Those are the pelvic-uretric junction, that is where the ureter begins and is joined to the uh, pelvis of the ureter, and the other is where the ureter enters the bladder. The ureter enters the bladder at an angle to prevent reflux of urine. This is called the uretrovesical angle. You are perhaps wondering what happened to the third site of narrowing. Well, another place where the lumen of the ureter is slightly narrower is where the ureter crosses the pelvic brim or enters the pelvis. At this point, the ureter lies at the bifurcation of the common iliac arteries. In this view, you can see the seminal vesicles as well as the vas deferens. The vas deferens joins with the duct of the seminal vesicle to form the ejaculatory duct. The ejaculatory duct opens into the prostatic urethra. These structures here are supplied by superior and inferior vesicle arteries, which are branches of the internal iliac. Here you can see the part of the urethra as it comes out through the prostate. The urethra will be examined in another specimen. For orientation, that is the ureter, that is the vas deferens, and there is the seminal vesicle. This specimen has been sectioned in the sagittal plane to show the interior. Here is the cavity of the bladder. I suggest you note the opening of the ureter in another specimen. This going through the prostate is part of the urethra. So the urethra begins at the neck of the bladder, and it is at this location that the internal urethral sphincter is located. It is just a part of the bladder muscle itself. The ejaculatory duct opens at this point in the prostatic urethra. I suggest you review the openings of other structures that lead into the urethra and the sphincters in another specimen. Which kidney are you looking at? This is the suprarenal, and I want you to note that the vein draining the suprarenal goes directly into the inferior vena cava on the right side. This, by the way, is the right gonadal vein, which is also draining directly into the inferior vena cava. The kidney has been sectioned to expose 
the pyramids and the minor calyces. This is the major calyx and here is the pelvis of the ureter formed by the fusion of many of the major calyces. This is the ureter as it is coming down. These are the branches of the renal artery. Sometimes there may be an accessory renal artery coming off the aorta at a lower level. Here the kidney has been sectioned along its length. This is the cortex. Here are the pyramids. This tiny things here, these are the minor calyces. Note how some of the minor calyces come together to form major calyces and then the major calyces themselves unite to form this pelvis of the ureter. These here are branches of the renal artery.